guys, I am Chris Kaylor and I'm Amber Fashion Kujin and today we are back again to guys with Band of Brothers. Uh, episode 6, Bastogne. Bastogne. Which interestingly, uh, I looked up if uh, a la baston, which is a French expression that basically says let's go to f let's go fight, uh, could have ha could have come from World War II or something because and I think it's a strange coincidence that is it? They're going to Bastogne and it sounds a lot like Baston and I'm like, mm. I didn't find anything about that But mm. it's an interesting point for me, but yeah So last episode was all about Winters um, His leadership and how good he was in that war Carrying his team, using them correctly, pointing them towards where to go, who to shoot, what to do And because of that, he had, uh, I mean, yes, some people still ended up dying, but he basically put in his 100% all the time to make sure no one would die or get hurt. And yeah. the men really liked that and they respected him for it. Uh, he put himself in danger a lot. So uh, there's that, but he came out on top. He survived apparently, so this is pretty good. We basically had an idea of what's the burden of a captain. We know? talked about that a little bit, yeah. And uh, he was promoted, so now he's technically not in charge of Easy Company. He's uh, creating the battle plans. Uh, it's a desk job mostly and he hates it. doesn't <laughs> like it. Yeah, and he's not with his men and this is stressing him out. Uh, now they are all headed towards Bastogne where uh, part, you know, part of the army was attacked. They know that they're going there to be surrounded, like they're gonna, gonna be surrounded with barely no ammo, barely enough clothes to, to survive winter, uh, barely enough food. Yay. So, yay, it's gonna nice. be tough as hell, and they are starting this with nothing. Mm. So let's see how they manage. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of these episodes, and check out our Patreon for the full-length reactions. Alright, let's go. They are doing a new war TV show, by the way. Really? With uh, the guy who played Elvis. Austin... Austin Butler. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it said from the producers of Bender yes. Brothers in the Pacific. I've, I've seen uh, the thumbnail for it, yeah. I think it's gonna be about uh, the pilots. Aviation? Yeah. It looks good. I wanna watch it, by mm. the way. We didn't have enough ammunition. We didn't have enough warm clothes. Mm. We had confidence that had our nothing. Just, higher just military their guts. authorities would get to us whatever we needed. Chevys knew right where we were, mm -hmm. and they really gave us a shellacking. Fog was in, they couldn't drop, they couldn't resupply us. Every time they tried to drop supplies into us, they missed us and dropped them to the Germans. You're kidding me, got, seriously? The arm with a piece of shrapnel took his arm off, Oof. above the elbow. They were taking him out, he said, get my wristwatch off my arm. Even today, a real cold night, first thing I'll say is I'm glad I'm not in Bastogne. Mm -hmm. He talked about how they never left that place, they will keep with them, stuff like that. Memories would be intense. I wonder if the guy who said, uh, take my wristwatch, was the one who uh, collected the wristwatch from the Germans he found. He didn't want them to steal his, so he was like, take mine. Maybe. Ugh, oh, tip of a finger? Yeah. No, his finger. Oh, I Probably thought he picked the no, no, finger no. on the no, ground. No, no, no. No, it's so cold that... Yeah, 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 okay. You're bleeding. We know how winters can get. Uh, I cannot imagine how it would be to go through that with no clothes, no warm clothes. Just seeing no gloves freaks me out. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> things matter. <laughs> but if it matters to him, yeah, why not? Yeah, but I mean... Sometimes you stay sane like this. It's a beard, it keeps you warm, I guess. Yeah, but it's a matter of principle, I think. He wants to, you know, be at his best. Makes him feel better. Give it to me straight. We've been taking ground in one position, General. Losing it in another. Now it looks like a standoff. We're digging in on the edge of the forest. Well, apparently we're following the duck no this episode. Or yeah. this is gonna shine. We have no winter clothes, we have little or no ammo. Line spread so thin, the enemy wanders into our CP to use our slit trenches, sir. We just can't cover the line. With the fog, you, can, you wouldn't be able to see yeah, much. Yeah, but sir, we've got some considerable gaps in our perimeter. Mm. I don't have enough people, sir. They're spread too damn thin. Hold the line, Colonel. Close the gaps. Do the impossible <laughs> with nothing. There's a lot of shit headed this way. This is the worst episode to remind me that I do not want to be a medic. Mmm. <laughs> I said it before, I would not want to be a doc. Mm -mm. Not in war. Can I scrounge your bandage from your weight, kid, sir? 
How are you fixed? Uh, no plasma, a couple of bandages, practically no morphine. Hook up with Doc Ryan, I'll fix you up what he has to spare. Thanks, Kev. And Eugene, get everything you can. You're gonna need it. Mm-hmm. What'd you get? I got, uh, I got this. I got myself a crap bandage. We have nothing. I need scissors. Oh. You got scissors, sharp scissors. Well, let's see. Uh, I'll have to check the soap. So we went from ammo box yeah, to helmet? What about an extra thread in your ink, you know? How'd you morphine, guys? Mm. You do with what you got, right? Which is nothing today. Here, take it! Where's Mikado? Christ knows! See, this is what I meant when I when I said you'd be freaking out because they will be calling for you. And but you need to go. You need to go. You have nothing. So how are you gonna help? You're gonna have to improvise. It. Can you imagine having to say to a guy who's begging for morphine, "I can't. I have nothing." Relax your arm, Come on. It's not the auto. But you don't need this. Not yet. I do. Some of these guys are gonna have to tough it out because in case someone else gets something worse. All right, here. So what I want you to do, work your way over to the third battalion, all right? You know what we need. Bandages, plasma, whatever you can beg, you beg. Give me some goddamn scissors, I can't get any. You get yourself a hot meal too, huh? I already have massive respect for this guy. Yeah. By the end of the episode, I'm gonna give him a fucking, you know, <laughs> fiction hug. Where the hell are we? You wouldn't be able to see the enemy until they're on you. <laughs> or this. Come on. Oh, oh shit. I thought it was a ditch and they were over there. Anybody see Lieutenant Dyke? Uh, Tri Battalion CP, sir. I perish. Tri Hinkle. AOG. Lieutenant Dyke's got a full AK. Try him. Yeah, I'm sure he's not using his. Peter Strode. Hinkle Vigle eats an armpit, huh? I'm just wondering if they would have talked about winters like this. They're trying to keep joyful? Yeah, the they've always been like this. Dev. Hey, Heffron, you okay? <laughs> what is with the Heffron bullshit, huh? You know my name, why don't you use it? Uh, it's Edward, right? Why the goddamn nuns call me Edward? Hey, listen, I need to know whether you kept your morphine for oh, he's getting... No, he asked me already, remember? Don't recall. Well, I can't really blame him. He's fucking stretched thin. He goes from men to men. He runs around like... Maybe he has memory problems. Or he doesn't oh, yeah. sleep enough. Probably he doesn't sleep enough. And we saw, like, the group earlier, they were together, and he was sitting away a little bit. Maybe he's not a part of any group because he goes from people to people, so he's not as close to anyone. Lieutenant, make sure you move around a little, get your blood flowing. I can't feel my feet. Yeah, well, that's why you gotta move around, you know, so you don't get transferred. Keep moving. Sergeant, I'm sorry, like, I know it must be hell, but I can't help you. Just drink lots of water. Water? It's pissing that hurts! Mm -hmm. Got yourself a little infection in that, uh, what do you call it? The club he asked for? <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Uh, it looks bad. It could be, it could be worse, I guess. Thank you. The advantage of having seen him running around asking for more freedom is that you know he has none. And... Yeah. I'd assume if the leader has the most stress no, no, no. in this group, the medic is like right there behind him. Right after? Is he bad? Maybe the more guilt. If he doesn't say, if he can't save people, if he can't help them out. Yes. Yeah. If he gets there too late. Hey, what's going on here? Why ain't these men evacuate? If we can't evacuate, we'll cut off. This is as far as it goes. Oh man. Like they need way more than just bandages. But we can't do shit. I need more from bandages, whatever you got. I can give you a little, but not a lot. Yeah. Hey, what's, what's this? Uh, from the bed. Mm -hmm. With sheets? You make do. It's survival. Anything can become useful if you think about it. Chocolate. Thank you. Please. I hope that she survives. I think it's boots for his friend who got no. Oh, you think she? Bubble. She might. Well, I don't know. They're. They're. Well, it depends. They might get attacked. Who knows? So. Let's move out. Tactical columns, gentlemen. Doctor, it's a combat patrol. Why don't you uh, stay back and keep your ass out of trouble, huh? Maybe that's why he can he cannot get close to them. He's always 
asked they, to stay back. They need and to keep him alive. If something I understand. happens, I, to yeah, be yeah. there. I know why they're doing it. It's but sad, that means, but... There's no, no, it's not here. sad. It just means he can't be a part of the group as no, much. No, that sucks, but there's a reason for it, unfortunately. Like, that really sucks. Just waiting for the call. He'd be having nightmares. Just waking up here in medic all the time. Ugh. Oh, shit. And that's his job. He would want to be there and help him. Oh, fuck. I don't know about that. Can you imagine choking on your own blood like this? Oh, this is... You see your friend dying right next to you like that, you can get close. This, was, this, this would be impossible. You wanted to get to him so much. In this episode, they will show us everything. He gets to see everything, we get to see everything. This is how it works. Honestly, I have a huge amount of respect for how calm he is. And he needs to. I know. I don't know how he does it, but he needs to. I don't to. know. Training, a force of habit. I don't know what his job used to be before that. He's trying. But after seeing your friend die like that, I don't know. Eat it. Good. Chocolate always helps, even if a little, only a little bit. What do you call those people again? Those Cajun healers. Traiteurs. You know, my grandma was a traiteurs. Traiteurs. Uh -huh. yeah, she was. Well, I <laughs> Laid her hands on people and cured them. Took away sickness, cancer, you name it. Your grandma did that? Maybe that's why he does I it too. To. I'm thinking maybe she inspired him to do this. Figure why they pick me for a medic. Snap of a finger. Just like that, you're a medic. It takes more than that to be a medic, though. Medic! Someone give us a hand here! The artery. Oh. 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 I'm enjoying, I'll say it again, the French this episode. <laughs> I like that it's yeah, realistic I, enough. I, I love the French, I don't love the woods. <laughs> no, but Makeup's the, great though. <laughs> the fact that they didn't, you know, translate everything. Sorry. They're Sorry. French, no. so they're speaking French. The fact that it's not even written in English, because the people that would be there that would not speak a word of French would just be here in French without understanding, so we're, they're putting us in their mentality. The secret, secret stash, guys. With the hands still full of dried blood. Ugh. Like, I know it's not his fault. He knows it's not his fault. But there's probably a voice in the back of his mind every time he loses a guy saying, You should have been quicker. You should have been better. You're a good nurse. No, I never want to treat another wounded man again. I'd rather work in a butcher's shop. But your touch calms people. That's a gift from God. No, it's not a gift. God would never give such a painful thing. To be the one that has, has to do this. Nurse! We need some help over here! She doesn't want to treat another wounded again, but she knows she has to do it. He's the same in that way. Hey, don't, don't, don't shoot, shoot the, guy, the dog, please. <laughs> For a guy who doesn't have a... I, it looks like he doesn't have a personal connection with any of them. He's still looking out for those wounds. It's the fact that he doesn't stay along with every one of them because he needs to be ever at the same time. That's why. But he remembers those things. Exactly, like he messes those names up because he's never with them truly. He doesn't have time to get close to them. But he never forgets to check on wounds. He never forgets to check on them. Like, are you okay? Do you need something yeah. else? Like. Oh, oh shit. Hey, Chief, let's go. 
there's one that's gonna lose his arm. That we know. I don't want to see that. He's supposed to concentrate on this while they're shooting right next to him. We're, we're, we're talking stress and... Okay, put him here. Where's his tag? What's wrong with him? Paralyzed. What? He's paralyzed. He can't feel a thing. I think it's starting to be too much. Like they had to shake him out of a, of the state he was in earlier. Can someone sit with them, please? Jim McAuliffe wishes us all a Merry Christmas. Ice cream for everyone. What's very bad all? Now, two days ago, the German commander demanded our honorable surrender. The German commander received the following reply. Nuts! We're giving our country and our loved ones at home a worthy Christmas present. We're truly making for ourselves a Merry Christmas. He's oh, so alone. He's disconnected, too. Winters has noticed, so maybe I'll go talk to him. I'm just sad because they've been talking about being home for Christmas for a while now, and this is how they spend it. Picture of my girl. Good looking bride, Buck. She's finished with me. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the time for Christmas, eh? Oh, yeah. I feel bad for him, too. He needs a break. What is it? Lemon powder snow cone. Yeah, it's fucking Christmas. At least they have each other. Harry. Well, I'm saying that, but the duck is sleeping alone Fire's in a hole during idea. Christmas. Just a couple of minutes. You'd be a target in the fucking night. Ah, you can't. Come. We've seen men go through this before, but he's the fucking duck. He can't afford not to move. Okay, get up. Not okay, lie down. Okay, get up. Come on. Oh, Jesus. This is this is shocking for anyone, and he keeps seeing wounds after wounds. But like, we are shocked seeing a few of them this episode. He's been seeing it for months and months. And... I will repeat. I hope that Anna's gonna survive. Well, please. Oh, boy. Hmm. He's been sent here. Like, this is supposed to be a haven where they go to rest and heal as much as possible. He was sent there to eat and rest, and he, they find this. Second to breathe. Everything okay, babe? That's his name. Earlier, when uh, Buck said babe, I was wondering why he called him babe. Fix it up. I was a bit weirded out. I was like, wait, what? You're awfully close. Anything can be used. Anything can make bandages. Hey, Gene. Call me babe. I did? Babe. Just now. Babe. Yes, I did. <laughs> babe. <laughs> Have fun. That's a goddamn right. <laughs> to me, that says that despite being disconnected and away from all of them, they still know him, he still has a connection with them, it's still there. If he can find it, at least he has friends on which he can rely on a little bit. He would need that. <laughs> Did it need it? Someone? <laughs> Piece of cake. We did good. Well, they did. Considering they did. Considering really good. everything? Yeah, they sure did.
I guess it's oh. to phrase it like a rescue that they didn't like. Come on. <laughs> God damn, this this is probably my favorite oh, episode gosh, so that far. That was something. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, uh, I think my one of my two or three favorite episodes, I think this could, this could be top so far. Yeah. I really, really like this one. It's brutal, though. Mm -hmm. An episode centered around a medic. But ser Fuck. seriously, I'm going to applause the makeup team. For they what did they good. did for that episode because those wounds. Bleh, but that's the thing. They're awfully. They're beautifully. Realistic. Real, awfully realistic, beautifully awful. We have seen certain wounds in the show so far. Like a few episodes here and there, we see stuff. Yeah. But this episode, I, I commented earlier that it felt like they were showing us all the wounds. But it makes sense because we're following a medic and he would be seeing these wounds constantly. This is everything. Yep, and he would be in charge of those every day. If we think it's disgusting to see a few makeups like this... And Imagine seeing them every real. hours, every day, every week, every putting your, month. Putting your hands on those, you, you get blood everywhere, you get close and personal. No wonder he's like that. Like, no wonder he's traumatized or you know de detached or he, he would need to to get detached a little bit because at one point it would get way too much he found a friend and that's another thing and this uh, this guy specifically found a friend back in the town only to lose her a little bit later in the episode and he was yeah. there to see it as a medic he would have to be everywhere all the time people would keep calling his name he'd be hearing medic 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 what do you do? He sleeps and he hears medic, medic, uh, medic. For sure he probably came back hearing that. <laughs> that better will remind me when I used to work night shifts. You were dreaming I, of the job. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's true. But this is on top of just habit. It's trauma, PTSD, all that shit. He, he probably brought it back. I wonder if he survived. I hope he survived and, and hopefully he was doing fine. Uh, I, I think someone said that now everyone from... Um, uh, Easy Company died, so n no one is alive from that company anymore. But still, when he was alive, I hope he, if he made it, that he managed. Cause goddamn, that would be hard. This is definitely the the job I would want the least. Despite the, I do wish I could help like he's doing. Like I could yeah. help people. I would not want to be there and not be able to do shit. But this is such a huge responsibility. Like the leader would be in a stress position constantly because he needs to think about what to do and if it doesn't go well, it's on him. But yeah. the medic, I said he was probably like right there below the, the leader, if only by a foot. Yeah. But technically we could argue that he's actually in a more stressful position. But I mean, both of them are in stressful position because when you're leader like with Winter, you need to think uh, plans and make them through. Because if you don't, your men's lives are on the line. And if they die, that might be because, uh, that might be your fault because your the leader wasn't think, thought about. Yeah, the leader would think, if he gets but, shot and I sent him there, it's my fault. But the medic would think, medic, if he gets shot and he dies, and yeah. it's because I wasn't fast enough, I True. wasn't there, I, or I, I like or earlier with the guy who was bleeding out, he, w he kept trying to find the artery and he kept saying he couldn't find it. Maybe, like right after he dies, in his head, it's probably saying, if I had found it, if I had been quicker, if I had been better. I do not know what job he did before. Uh, I'm not saying that you had to be a doctor to be a medic. Like he said it, pretty much everyone can be a medic in a second in this army. Like they have to say, oh, that's what I want to do. But that doesn't mean that they have what it takes to be one. Yes, it's Me mentally at least. That's what I meant in the episode. Like he said you can be a medic like that, but to be a true medic, it takes so much more. He, I, I'm... I'm Kudos to this guy because honestly he had what it took and I think he might have done this he might have chosen to be that I think because of his grandmother mm. like if she had that touch if she used to but help love, people but you know what I love is the fact that when he talked about his grandmother it was kind of an awe the fact that she yeah that's what I think she was in a position of helping people to take away their pain but that's what and, I think he sees it as a gift and and the fact that what we just saw. Uh, with Anna, the girl, she told him that uh, she doesn't want to help a wooden man ever again in her life after this. She's going to prefer to work in a butcher shop. And that God would not give something like that you know, to someone. But the fact that you're, you want to help people, you want to bring to uh, take 
take away their pains to help them uh, make them healthy in the, um, and you see so much horrors so much suffering that it just takes I don't want to see you don't see the good side to yeah. it thank you I was about to say you don't you don't see the joy out of your job, but there's no there's joy. No joy in this. <laughs> so not a good way to say it, but thank you very much. It gets it probably gets really hard to see the well. There is definitely good. This is probably one of the most important jobs out there. They need you, but, the but there's no in, like there's no gratification because you you can save one guy, but. Do you really know what happened? Like he's keeping in touch with all the wounds, but what he sees is basically there's only so much he can do. You can tell them to do something. That's, that doesn't mean they will do it or that they can do it. If they have no supplies, you can tell some a guy like, oh, change your socks or uh, put on some boots. He doesn't have boots. He only has those socks. They have. They barely have anything. So. You know what you want to do, you know what you should be doing, that doesn't mean you can do it, that doesn't mean they can follow your instructions, that doesn't mean it will save them. Mm -hmm. So you do your best with what you have, but you're sending these guys with these incredibly fucked up wounds back to a town that can barely take care of them, then the town gets bombed. Would you see, would you see the, not the need, but the, would you see the purpose of your job? If it leads to death anyway, it's gonna be trauma after trauma. You're trying to, uh, you're, you're trying to fix something, but don't have the right materials, and it it leads to nothing. You it, know, it still you're, leads you're, to you're trying wounds. to save lives. You're trying to uh, stop the suffering, but at the end you don't. Because, but that's because because you just can't. That's sad because that's what he's probably thinking. That's probably how they're seeing it, but. These guys that survived did so because of people, men like him, women like her, people who put themselves through this in order to keep them alive just a little bit longer. And as much as I said, I think it was in episode two or three, that the human body is weak as fuck. Like, there, it doesn't take much to put, you, put us on the ground. But sometimes... We can survive great things too. Uh, yeah. So, yes, it is horrific, but sometimes just a little bit of help, a, band a bandage here, uh, a hand there, like just a little gesture can be the, the, you know, the line between life and death, the, the, the thing that switches it from life or death for one man. So it's hard for him. It would be impossible not to be traumatized by what he's going through. It could change his way of seeing healing and, and medicine and just the job of a doctor forever. But he made, he did so much good and he helped so many people. And that's kind of why I feel it sucks that because of his job, he feels a bit detached from the rest because he's not, I mean, he's not a part of them in the same way. He has to stay behind. He's waiting. He's always jumping from one man to the other. Uh, they call his name constantly so he can't stay in one spot, he needs to go for, you know, oh, uh, are you taking care of your wound and moving on? Like, he can't stay in chat, yeah. so he doesn't get close to these people. Although, I, like, it would suck because if you think about it, knowing someone's name does a lot to connect yourself with that person. Yeah. And to call someone by their nickname, it, it, it's kind of, it's, it's close and personal. So to do it to someone makes them happy. We saw it in the end, like, you get that smile. And coming from a guy who constantly messes it up, <laughs> it... It's genuinely nice. Mm. So he cannot, like, it's, it would be so much harder for him because he doesn't spend time with these guys and he would feel left out. He's been, he's being told to stay back. So on top of him feeling the need to be there to help them, because that's his job, he wouldn't feel connected to these people as much as he should. So they're not friends, but he's the one that needs a friend the most in this place because of what he sees and because of what he goes through and the amount of pressure his job holds. God damn, I mean, a medic is a tough position in the army. And oh. medic in a situation like this? The, the way they say it, baston, it's baston, but baston. the way they say it really, really sounds like baston. So I kept thinking about baston. a la baston again. Yeah, baston. And I'm like, it really represents well the, the saying. Because this is basically what happened. They were fucking stuck in this hell. Mm -hmm. And it's just like waiting for the fight to come to you or waiting for you to stumble on the fight. They literally fell in one of the, German, uh, the Germans' hole. Oh. Terrible conditions. Weather is one of the worst things. Like when you are 
they always say that if you end up lost in the woods or something, like if you end up lost somewhere, shelter is one of the first mm -hmm. things you need to focus on. Then a fire and then water. Shelter, fire. If you can find water, water that's that's good. Uh, they did have water. That's the one thing with snow that is actually pretty okay. Yes, the snow was um, tainted. And by the way, speaking of snow that is tainted, um, I love the ending of we see the snow, we see the blood in the snow, but then we the further up we go, the cleaner it gets. Yeah. So after the blood and the pain and all of that, if we get to a better future, we get to something that's pure and something that's a lot like that. cheerful. This is a this was a good image. But uh, yeah, so you don't know what's in that snow that's around you. It could be blood, could be bacteria, could be a shit ton of uh, powder and, and, and residues. But is, if you end up in a position where you're desperate for water and stuff, you can always melt snow. True. So like there's I, that. Like we said, you do with what you got. The, the cold? The best, the best that you can. <laughs> so at least you got that. So it's, it's not like, yeah, you got that. But the rest, <laughs> The cold is a terrible thing. We live in Quebec, so like six months a year we go through uh, winter. And uh, it's not the coldest place on earth, but we are Quebecois, so we are used to uh, saying how um, mad we are about snow and winter. This is part of our, our culture. <laughs> Be, being, mad at, being mad at winter, yeah. Yeah, surely, un bon Quebecois. We, no, but really, we know what it's like to be like minus 40 outside with winter gear for and we don't stay out when it's minus 40 with winter gear yeah. they are not like they have no choice every like we wish they could go back home they wish they could go be with their families it's fucking christmas they should be having fun with their loved ones but they are stuck Instead, in the hole stuck in hole forced to be like cold together. as shit you yeah because it's so fucking cold and they have no winter gear no gloves no snow boots nothing. and on top of that like that one guy with the the, the foot problem like his feet were getting wet uh, snow would get you, that's a, that's another thing feet of snow would get your feet wet and if you leave your feet in those wet socks in the cold like it, just wet socks like if you keep your feet or whatever part of your body in water for too long it's really bad. So your body is going to start, you know, going all kinds of weird. But doing that without moving around. So basically he's, he's, he's not making the blood circulate correctly. His feet were fucking white. This would, he, he would lose his feet if he wasn't careful. And I don't even know what happened to him after. But it looks like he wasn't in a position to listen to what was being told. Like, you need to do this. You need to focus on this. Like, he told him to put his socks around his neck to make them, uh, to dry them. to make them dry, but, like, is it really gonna work? Like, cold and, uh, cold and wet, uh, stuff in the cold like that in the winter doesn't necessarily dry. It would get colder, it would ice over, but, and the thing is, if it ices over, the ice later on will melt and it will stay, what it would I mean, still be, you know, around wet. your neck, maybe your body heat could have, help to dry them. Hopefully. That's why you told him to put them there, but that's if you have time to leave them there for a bit. And that's, and the guy that didn't even have boots, what do you do? That's the same guy. Was it the same guy? Mm -hmm. uh, in any case. He, thanks, yeah, yeah. thanks, Doug, for the boots. Yeah, yeah, it's true, okay. But like he, he started with no boots. Because if you take them off, like what's to say that that other guy... Uh, <laughs> he took them off to dry them, or to dry his, uh, his dog, and they, explode. they, ex yeah. they exploded. Or that other guy who lost his helmet because it got, you know, uh, it received a hit and stuff, and he, it was full of holes. If you lose, and you have no supplies, so what? If you lose something, you, there's no replacement. So you gotta make do. I mean, uh, <sighs> when you say that, I recall that guy who tried to make a coffee in the morning. The one thing to keep him warm, to have a nice morning as much as possible, and he got shot. <laughs> you know, the guy who started a fire got shot too because it became a beacon. It you're, became you're a just, target. You're just trying to have something nice. While you're living in hell for who knows how long, yeah. the cold would be the and worst. And you just but, can't. Yeah. And the whole situation at the beginning, especially, no supplies, would freak me out. But like, imagine being a dog, having knowing you have to go help those people, and you have nothing to help them with. So in that case, everything becomes a bandage, even if there's emotional attachment to it, like the the bandana at the end. 
but yeah, the cold, the lack of supply, you'd be shaking constantly, you'd be wet all over, there's no sleeping com comfortably in this situation, so you'd be tired, yeah. and you are surrounded by mist, so you don't fucking know, and snow also covers up a lot, so you don't know what you're gonna stumble upon, whether or not the Germans are advancing, you don't see them, uh, if they find you first, you're pretty much fucked, and it's Christmas, so Merry fucking Christmas. It's really, really sad. But this was my favorite episode. I think it was really well portrayed. Yeah. Really emotional. Uh, I, uh, no wonder the, someone said the doc was gonna, sh was gonna have his episode to shine. I feel like, yeah, he's my favorite guy after winters now. <laughs> mm. uh, I he did his I, job. I feel bad for Buck. Oh man, yeah. I want to see more of that. I know did next episode. Think, did yeah. she broke it up with him before he left, or he received a he letter? He probably received a letter, which would fucking suck. Could you imagine? I mean, it might have been tough for people back home, not knowing when your loved one will come back. We you know. You, we usually, when we talk about stuff we see in in shows and situations, we like to look at things from both perspectives. So I don't want to be a hypocrite this time and say like she's a shitty one for doing this to him knowing he was at war. But then again, we don't really know what she's going through. It's been months. I don't know when he got here, but it could have been longer than that. Uh, when you're far from, from the heart, it's hard to love. And maybe she just felt that she needed to move on and do her her job and keep doing living her life. And that's why she decided to leave. Like, we don't know the, the circumstances. And, and, so we and, can't and really no, judge, but... Sorry. In a way, li life continued to go to move on. Unfortunately, back home. yeah. It, but it fucking sucks. Like, from it her does, perspective, we don't know. We don't know. But I it, I can only assume how hard it would be to stay home and not see your, your lover or husband for many, many, many months and you're trying to you're trying to live, you're trying to keep going. It would be hard. Maybe sometimes it's just the the constant worrying would get too much, so you'd rather disconnect. There are many reasons. But we spend our time, those episodes, with these guys. So I cannot help but feel like couldn't you wait till he came back? <laughs> to break it up? God sorry, damn. Ho sorry, honey, you went through hell. Let's you're, break, no, no, let's you're break going. Up. I'm sorry. It's actually worse. Like, at least if he, if he was home, he would have time to, to breathe, to, you know, friends around him, family around him to support him. He is in the middle of war, in the middle of a terrible battle, before in terrible circumstances. Before Christmas. I know she didn't know when the letter was going to get to him. Like, sure. it could have been a long time. And she didn't know in what situation it was going to be. But still, I could not do it. I would be home thinking, like, no matter the reasons, at least wait till he comes back because he's... Actually, he's in hell right now, and you want to add to that? Is the fact that most of these guys, one of the only thing that probably keep them going is the fact that I'm doing this for my loved one. To or at least I have. Yeah, this I, to I come have back people to. to come back to. <sighs> no, I so mean, yeah, we don't know what happened back there for her to do that. Do that, but it freaking sucks for Buck, man. Oh, it really, really sucks, and he doesn't need this because he's been already going through his own thing. I hope next episode we focus on him. He's the thumbnail for the, the episode. So that's Which is why, breaking point. <laughs> yes, and I think it's the episode where he takes off his helmet. So, yeah. because of the thumbnail, it looks like it's the same place. But he doesn't have an helmet. Yeah. So, uh, it could be that. And if it's focused on him, we'll finally get to see what he's going through. But ever since he was shot, he came back. It looks like he came back a bit broken, like he left a part of himself behind. Uh, remember watching the movie uh, Witches was trying to talk to him and he was just completely disconnected and this episode it's like he didn't really know how to connect with the guys anymore like he tried to make a smart remark and it didn't land he tried to say something funny and the, it, it, it just didn't work and he he had a hard time just being there with them compared yeah. to how he was before when he was playing you know darts and stuff like this is a huge change yeah but uh so on top of that, a he's lot, uh, a mm. lot of time has passed. I know a, a lot, lot, a lot, a lot of, of trauma ended up piling over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each, uh, each other, you know. I know, I know. That's why I'm saying I need. I like an episode centered around him, so like we get to see what's going on. But uh, he needs a break. They all need a break, to be fair. But <sighs> it was a really tough episode. 
Loved it, though. And the next one being the breaking point, it's definitely not getting better. Hmm. Okay. All right. But I have a lot of respect for that doc, that for all the medics in, in the army. That was rough. <laughs> yeah, really, really mm. rough. Uh, and uh, like I said, uh, Winters is still my favorite. My favorite guy in in the story, in in this company that I know. Uh, but Eugene, man, you you got up there fast. He's up there too. I, I really hope they, they all made it out. The ones I, I know, the ones I recognize. The ones who remember the names. The ones I look out for. <laughs> We'll all right. So thank you guys for watching this episode with us. It was traumatizing, a to bit, say the least. But it was good. Really well done. So thank you for watching this with us. If you want to see the next two episodes right away, they are on Patreon already. You can check them out. The link is in the description below. And if you don't want to end the next one, we'll be on YouTube next week. Yes. So see you then, guys. Bye.